Hello and welcome uh, to uh, Get More Out of College, another MP th MP3 tutorial. Um, today we're actually talking um, about the heart. Last week or a few weeks ago, we did a uh, review about the Bohr shift equation and how pressure and hemoglobin and carbon dioxide and oxygen, how all of those tie in together. Um, a couple of questions from that review that a lot of students we got a lot of feedback from was about how does the uh, how does all of those really relate? Now I'm going to go through questions that we covered during that exam, just about five questions I think, that we covered during that exam and we're going to discuss them. Okay, first the exam says note for questions 26 to 32, use the equation below as reference. And you're given the Bohr shift equation. Now usually whenever you're given the equation, it means you need to have known it. Uh, it means asking you the question, asking you the equation is very obvious. Uh, so now you see carbon dioxide plus water in equilibrium to give you the mm, the H2CO3 plus the bicarbonate ion, then this carbonic acid, bicarbonate ion, and hydrogen proton. Now you see on one end where the course is, you see we have an increase in hydrogen protons. So you know pH is going down when the equation is shifting from left to right. On the other end, you have carbon dioxide on the far left, which means an increase in H plus should give you a decrease in CO2, or an increase in CO2 should give you, I'm sorry, or an increase in CO2 should give you a decrease in this. Okay, now here you're also given a graph, and let's just go down to the questions. Question number 26 here says, a vast majority of carbon dioxide exists in the blood in the form of carbonic acid, bicarbonate ion, CO3 minus, CO2, or carbon monoxide. Of the answer is, I'll let you think for a little bit, the answer is actually B. HCO3 minus most of the carbon the ma monox carbon dioxide in your blood exists in that form right there okay now let's go to the next question okay ventricular tachycardia is a dangerous condition of elevated heart rate about 200 beats per minute which of the following best explains why VTAC is such a deadly condition if normal rhythm is not quickly restored. Okay, now let's let's analyze. A. The heart fills with blood during systole, so faster heartbeat means less time for the blood to enter the heart. A faster heartbeat means diminishing returns in the terms of amount of blood supply to the body. Okay. Now, first thing wrong here is the heart does not fill with blood during systole and you already guessed that the heart fills with blood during diastole relaxation so this should already tell you that this is on the right track and this is wrong even though the rest of all of this is correct you kind of see how you can eliminate your answers so damage to the SA node with aging, no, you know that is not true. Uh, let you think about the rest. Uh, the right MC, the heart fills with blood during diastole. This is correct. So faster heartbeat means less time there is for blood to enter the heart. A heart with VTAC cannot properly fill with blood and paradoxically pu stops pumping. That is correct. So E is your best answer of all the choices, hence the correct answer. So you think about it, when heart rate increases, usually there is a decrease in hemoglobin's um, affinity for oxygen. Hence, there should be, there's going to be a, an increase in this and a decrease in that. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, yeah, that is correct. Let's go 27. 
from question number 27 when there is high demand okay we're just talking about it when there's high demand leading to an elevated heart rate the hemoglobin of a given patient suffering this condition will let's think again about it and we just discussed it we experience a reduced affinity for O2 because this is increasing uh, you have the it's gone more more acidic pH is uh, dropping pH is dropping protons are increasing in concentration and hemoglobin experience a reduced affinity for oxygen okay let's go now when there is a dash in carbon in carbon dioxide concentration in the blood one would suspect a blank in blood pH okay now you know carbon dioxide and blood pH are inversely proportional to each other so if one is decreasing the other one is increasing if one is increasing the other one is decreasing so you just go to your answer choices and you find which ones have an inverse relationship see that's a directly proportional that is incorrect this is directly proportional that is incorrect this is the only inverse relationship so whenever there's an increase in CO2 concentration you should expect to see a decrease in blood pH and you go back again to your equation again it said use this information for all for the questions as a reference and that's your equation right there and you can see it okay let's drop down real quick so we can wrap up this video uh, metabolic respiratory disturbances can cause pH to shift acidosis when pH shifts up or when it shifts down now there's an error here when pH shifts up that will be alkalosis so that is an error let me correct that when pH shifts up that is alkalosis when pH drops that is acidosis there we go <coughs> given rice to a potentially dangerous dangerous life threatening condition dangerous and and life threatening condition in the case of a patient suffering from lactic acid acidosis syndrome in response to change in blood pH respiration respiratory rates may rise or fall is the first part of the question so you go back here, look again at your equation, look at the pH level, it's down here and the lower pH, you also look at it here. Now you know during lactic acid acidosis, respiratory rate should rise. Why would it rise? Because pH is, has dropped, it's, it's getting more acidic, you know there's going to be more CO2 and so there is more demand for oxygen so your heart rises your heart rate rises your blood is trying to keep up with the demands for oxygen and that is in order to decrease the amount of CO2 being excreted not to increase it which is the error here so A is the right answer panting by an overheated dog is an example of evaporative cooling we should all know that uh, let's move on to the last one. The blood level of which gas is most important in controlling human respiration rate? So you have nitric acid, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. And so you go back to your equation right here. There's only one gas in this boy shift equation for balancing the human respiratory rate, and that's CO2. So you come back down here. And carbon dioxide and that's your right answer so just again the explain explaining the differences between how blood pH co2 concentration hemoglobin's affinity affect your respiration so hopefully we can just go through that feel free to review this video I know the video is kind of shaky and I did corrections but feel free to also send us an email um, if you want more information we'll be more than glad to do that for you but until then, thank you very much, and you have a good day. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.